Hey guys, Daniel Broadway here, and um, this is my first uh, tutorial video on model making, and what I am working on here is the Fine Molds 172nd X-Wing. Um, and I've had a few requests on how I'm doing the paint chipping effect down the red stripe of the X-Wing, so uh, I thought I'd go ahead and do a video tutorial for you guys, so stay tuned for that. Okay folks, now I've got this uh, fuselage masked up, and I've left the area I want to be red. And so what I've got here is there's a, a pot here. It's hard to see, but there's water in this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take normal uh, salt, which I got actually from McDonald's. Uh, the reason I got the McDonald's salt instead of using home salt is because the granules are actually much smaller than table salt. So I'm just going to crack one side open, pour it into an empty pot, and that should be enough uh, for one, and I've left the other side closed so that I can use it again later. So, what you do is you take a fine tipped brush, such as this one, and you dip it in the water, and I'm just going to kind of just work the brush here a minute just to get it kind of smooth. This has kind of been ratted out a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to put little drops of water anywhere on this surface that I want a paint chip to be. Um, and you could use reference of the studio model if you are uh, crazy enough to want to put the chips where the studio model is. But I'm just going to apply them randomly because I'm not terribly concerned about where they are. But I'm going to keep in mind where they might be. And paint tends to chip on the edges more than anywhere else. So I'm going to apply a good amount of water there. And some here. And try to vary the size of your drops. So maybe I'll put one little drop there, and maybe I'll put like three little drops there, three or four, and kind of pull the water along so that you get some dots and then some kind of streaks of water. And you'll see it beat up on the surface. It's probably hard to see on camera, but uh, that's okay. You get the idea. So now I just want to do a little area at first. You don't want to go all over because the water beads will dry out very fast. So I'm going to pinch some salt here, and then I'm just going to sprinkle it down on the surface where all my water beads are. Let me get a little more here. Then just blow away the excess. And now, I don't know if you can see that, there are little clumps of salt here. And if you give it a few minutes for the water to evaporate, they will cling to the surface and work as a mask for painting. I'm just going to do a few more here. Again, I'm going to take some salt, pinch it, and sprinkle the surface. I'm trying to get as much as I can here. You want to apply a pretty good amount because a lot of it will not interact with the water beads and just fall away. So make sure you cover the surface nice and even. Then blow away the excess. And now you have a very nice chipped surface there um, and it'll be good for painting masks okay so here is the salt dried up and uh, you can see we got some pretty nice uh, areas here but there's a couple of spots that I feel are too large of a paint chip for the scale like this glob right here it's very large so let me just start chipping away on the edge with a soft brush I don't want all of that on there um, in fact, let me just get rid of it all together. But uh, if there's any large globs like that, like you feel are maybe out of scale a little bit, just go ahead and take a soft tip brush and just brush them right off. And uh, be careful not to disturb the other paint clumps that you, or excuse me, salt clumps that you want. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to airbrush my red over the salt because it's uh, I've given it a few, uh, probably about half an hour to an hour to dry. Um, 
So that's what I'll do. And the thing you want to keep in mind with airbrushing, I'm not going to be able to videotape that, but what you want to do is go down and light coats, very light coats with your airbrush. Just build up the red. Don't try to do it all in one coat or two coats because um, it'll interact with the salt and it'll just become a globby mess around the salt. So you just want to lay down very thin, very light coats and build your color up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go airbrush this and I'll come back and show you how it looks. Okay, so here are our results after painting. As you can see here, I have painted the red stripe and uh, the salt stayed on, uh, so it made a good mask. When that salt comes off, we'll have our natural uh, paint chipping there. Now, one thing I sh a couple of things actually I should point out is one, um, I sprayed, like I said earlier, in very, very thin coats. I went on this really whisper thin with each coat. It took me a while to build up the red color. Um, and you want to do that just so you can have a nice chipping effect. And also, the other reason is that the panel lines on this model are so thin and fine that I was worried about filling the panel lines up with paint. So that's another reason why I went very, very thin on this. <clears throat> another thing you may notice is that there is some mild discoloration around the paint chips where the salt is. And... The reason I did, and the reason this happens is if you have acrylic paint, the salt will actually melt into the water a little bit of the acrylic paint, the water base, and um, the salt is actually deposited, uh, kind of dissolved into the paint. And uh, some people may find this objectionable and not want to do it this way. And if you don't like that effect, what you can do instead is use a liquid mask from like Humbrol or um, Vallejo. Um, but I kind of like it. It adds to that weathered and stained look, and X-Wings are really filthy anyway, so I imagine that discoloration will be hidden under a lot of grime anyhow. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off the paint masks, and we'll come back and remove the salt so you can see how the final effect will look. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, we got our masking off now, and so the last thing to do is you want to take a soft toothbrush, and what you want to use is just the toothbrush to take away the salt. Just go down a couple times and there you go. Realistic paint chipping on an X-Wing. So let's flip it over. Let's do the other side. Since you guys didn't see the other side earlier, I'm just going to take the paintbrush, gently, gently rub down the sides and brush away the excess. So there's your paint chipping. Simple as that. Very simple process. Um, if you don't like the discoloration, I recommend using the liquid mask as I said, but um, I also believe that if you use enamels, you won't get any discoloration, but um, like I said, I kind of like it. Uh, it's not terribly noticeable, but it's just barely there and adds to the weather look in my opinion, so I quite like that. And that's it folks, I'll put a couple of uh, high res stills at the end for you guys to check out, and uh, that's it.